Hello, I am Dr. S. Mishra. I am a dental surgeon and I welcome you all to our channel. Now, Ask the Doctor. Today, the date is 31st August 2021. Recently, Mathura in Uttar Pradesh in India have reported cases of a mystery fever which has been identified as scrap typhus. The disease has affected more than two dozen people in the district. Several districts of Uttar Pradesh and Assam have reported cases of scrap typhus, a mystery fever in India. In this video, I will give you all information on scrap typhus. Now, diagnosis of scrap typhus is often missed as the infection mimics symptoms of common monsoon infections such as dengue, chikungunya. According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, scrap typhus is an infectious disease caused by a bacteria called Orientia susugamushi. Orientia susugamushi is a mite-borne bacterium belonging to the family Rickettsiae. It is a natural and an obligate intracellular parasite of mites. This bacterium is highly virulent such that its isolation and cell culture are done only in a laboratory facility with biosafety level 3. So the causative agent of the disease scrub typhus is a bacteria which is called Orientia susugamushi and this bacteria is carried by a tropical flea called the chigurs and this larval mites spread this infectious bacteria to human. So the infection spreads to human through bites of infected chigurs. These chigurs are tropical flea and they are brownish or reddish or orange, yellow or straw colored and no more than 0.3 mm in length. Where do chigurs live? Chigurs live in moist grassy areas like fields, forests, lawns, gardens, near lakes, streams. This infection was first reported in Japan in 1810. The incubation period or the period between the bite and the appearance of symptoms takes between 6 and 21 days. The average is 10 days. The initial symptoms are fever with chills associated with headache, muscle pain or myalgia, sweating and vomiting. The site on human skin where the trigger bites develops a dark scap-like region which is also known as esker. According to CDC, after contracting the infection, a person can experience mental changes ranging from confusion to coma. This inflamed scar-like scap called esker is regarded as the most useful diagnostic clue in patients with acute febrile illness. It is formed on the skin where an infected might bite. But the problem is that esker is not always present. At the highest record, only 55% of scrub typhus patients had esker during an outbreak in South India. This infection can lead to respiratory distress, inflammation of the brain and the lungs, kidney failure and ultimately multi-organ failure leading to death. So how to prevent these disease? We need to stay away from these bites of the chigurs. Avoid going to places where recent cases have been reported. According to CDC, we have to avoid contact with infected chigurs. So while traveling to regions where scrub typhus is common, people should avoid areas with lots of vegetations. And if we visit there, we have to wear proper clothing in order to avoid the bites of the chigurs. 
CDC further advises people to dress children in clothing that covers arms and legs or cover crib, stroller and baby carrier with mosquito netting in order to keep scarp trifers at bay. It also asks them to treat clothing and gear with 0.5% per methrine as it kills the chigos. Now what is the treatment? According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, if someone gets infected by scrub typhus, the person should be treated with the antibiotic doxycycline. People who are treated early with doxycycline usually recover quickly, according to the agency. So doxycycline is the most commonly used and is considered as the drug of choice because of its high efficacy and quick action. But in pregnant women and babies, it is contraindicated and azithromycin is the drug of choice. In Southeast Asia, where doxycycline and chloramphenicol resistance have been experienced, azithromycin is recommended for all patients. Please avoid taking self-medication. Contact your doctor or visit a hospital if you experience any symptoms of scrap typhus. Apart from India, cases of scrap typhus have been reported from rural areas of Indonesia, China, Japan and Northern Australia. Till now, no vaccine is available to prevent scrap typhus. I want to mention few things related to this disease. The mite larva called chigas are the natural ectoparasites of rodents. Now humans get infected upon accidental contact with infected chigas. The scar-like scab called esker is the good indicator of the infection but it is not always present. And this bacteria Orientia susugamushi is endemic to the so-called Susugamushi Triangle which is a region covering the Russian forest in the north, Japan in the east, northern Australia in the south and Afghanistan in the west. The main symptom of this infection is high fever. However, the symptom is similar to other vector-borne diseases such as malaria, typhoid, chikungunya, dengue fever and this makes precise clinical diagnosis difficult which often leads to misdiagnosis. Suspected infections are confirmed with serological test. Now before ending this discussion, I want to say a few lines about the pathogenesis of this disease crop typhus in a point-wise manner for your ease of understanding. Now what happens, the infection scrub typhus starts when the larval stage of the mite or the chigas bite on the human skin during their feeding. The bacteria are deposited at the site of the feeding or inoculation where they multiply. Then they cause progressive tissue damage and this is tissue damage is called necrosis. And this tissue damage or necrosis leads to the formation of an escar on the skin. Now after that, necrosis progresses to inflammation of the blood vessels called vasculitis. And this in turn causes inflammation of the lymph nodes called lymph adenopathy. And within a few days, vasculitis extends to various organs including the liver, brain, kidney, meninges and lungs. Now the main difficulty with this disease is the misdiagnosis. This misdiagnosis leads to improper treatment which gradually leads to high mortality rate. In cases of misdiagnosis and failure of treatment, systemic complications rapidly develop, including acute respiratory distress syndrome, acute kidney failure, encephalitis, gastrointestinal bleeding, hepatitis, meningitis, myocarditis, pneumonia, pancreatitis, 
septic shock and multiple organ dysfunction syndrome in india scrap typhus has become the major cause of acute encephalitis syndrome which was earlier caused by, mainly by a viral infection japanese encephalitis thus you can see the importance of proper diagnosis in case of this disease or this infection that's all for today if you find our video informative then please subscribe to our channel for more health related information and videos our videos will indeed make you a little more aware of the current health issues thank you stay healthy and stay safe